And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thanks for joining me today for a quick chat and, of course, our morning cup of coffee. And today is a huge feast day in the life of our church. August 15th, of course, the falling asleep or the dormition of the Virgin Mary. It's the feast day in honor of the Theotokos. So, a blessed feast day to us all as we celebrate today, a huge feast day. And if you're celebrating your Names Day today, a blessed Names Day to you, a happy Names Day. It's a huge feast in the life of our church. And so I wanted for today to focus, of course, on the Virgin Mary. And two things that I wanted to say about sort of the role of the Virgin Mary. The first one I think is pretty obvious and is very easy and safe. The second one, I'm going to go out on a limb and probably get myself into a little bit of trouble. So, and that's, of course, always fun. The first thing is, I think we all know, that she is, as the mother of God, the, the intercessor, the one that we ask for help. And that's how we all should be relating to her all the time. And that's the main focus, the main goal that I wanted to get across for this, is that it's the all the time part. Not just today, not just two weeks in August, but really throughout the year, on a regular basis, whenever you're offering your prayers, your daily prayers, daily, in quotes, prayers, um, don't forget the Virgin Mary. Don't forget the Panagia to ask for help. Remember, she has this special relationship with Christ. She's his mother, right? And we see this in the Bible. The first miracle Christ performs, the wedding at Cana, he does at the request of his mother. And so it's that intercession that we can get from her. She begs and pleads with her son for us. And we need all the help we can get. So as part of your regular prayers, don't forget to include a simple prayer to the Virgin Mary to intercede, to ask her son for help. It doesn't have to be some long drawn out thing. You can find something from the morning prayers or evening prayers uh, that are there from a compline something from a paraclesis or from an akatha service, but generally just, Most Holy Theotokos, help me. Just, just that. Um, and, and that's something that we should be doing regularly. Asking for help, asking for intercession. So that's the first thing that's kind of obvious, but I feel like it needs to be said because we can forget to do that as part of our regular prayers. The second thing that's a little bit more dicey is I was thinking about role models. And I was thinking about role models, especially for our, our young ladies, for girls and for mothers and for young mothers and women in general. And I know nowadays it, it, you can't even really sort of specify that anything might be for girls or might be for women exclusively, first of all. Second of all, can you even define what that is anymore? But uh, yeah, I'm saying as a role model, I was thinking about the Virgin Mary as a role model for our young ladies and for our women and for our mothers. Um, because, you know, for Christians, for generations, for, well, the past 2,000 years, who do you think the primary role model has been? If you had asked an average Christian girl a thousand years ago, who do you want to be like? Who's your role model? They might have said their mother, their grandmother, someone in the family. And they probably, more often than not, at least if they were Christian, they probably would have said the Virgin Mary. Maybe they even would have said, you know, a saint if they had a patron saint. You know, um, so if their name is Catherine, they might have said, well, I want to be like St. Catherine. She's my patron saint. She was strong and powerful and beautiful. Um, but generally speaking, I think a lot of them would have said, Christian girls and women and mothers for generations, well, I'm, if I'm looking for someone as a goal, to aspire to be like and to imitate and emulate, it's the Virgin Mary. Of course, she's, she's the mother of God. She has all the virtues. She has humility and piety and faithfulness and, and modesty and purity. I, that's what I want to be like. Now, fast forward to today, and this is the dicey part, and think if you were to ask the average girl, not just any girl, but Christian, once again in quotes, the average Christian girl today who do you want to be like? Who's your role model? How horrifying would the answer be? What actress would you hear? What singer would you hear? Um, you know, what YouTuber, what influencer on TikTok? Um, what, what would you hear? What would they say? And, um, and I'm talking about, we're thinking about the younger girls, but for the people that are in, that are in their 20s, really, what would they be saying? 
who is their role model and what names would you have thrown out? And then if you really looked at the lives, the personal lives of those individuals, how horrifying it would be to say, wait, that's who you want to be like? And um, we've sort of lost this idea of what we are aspiring to. And I think that's something that we need to regain a little bit and something that we need to sort of reemphasize and think about, especially for some of our younger girls, our young ladies, our, our mothers, our young women, to sort of remember, as a Christian, I'm aspiring to be virtuous, right? And so aspiring to be virtuous, I need a model for that. Gee, who is a model for that for women? Well, it's the Virgin Mary. It's the Panagia. And that's something that we should think about and remember. Don't forget to pray to her and ask for intercession and to ask her to plead with her son to save us. And also don't forget that she is a role model for women everywhere of all ages, something to aspire to, and a life of purity that we're trying to live each and every day. Amen.